Hi, I'm Bob Leffler with Fearless Agent Coaching and Training, and I want to welcome you to today's free webinar on how to be a fearless agent. So here's what I want to do today. First of all, I want to talk about some of the um, problems that I'd say were built into our real estate industry, talk a little bit about why those problems even exist, give you some tools and some techniques, teach you some stuff that you can walk right away from this webinar and make a lot more money today, and then we'll have a little fun as we go along, hopefully. So I just want to start by giving you my story in real estate. You know, I got into real estate in 1984. By the way, I'm from Scottsdale, Arizona, land of the blazing sun. But I got into the real estate when the interest rates were 15% coming down from 21. The average house in my town so it took about a year to a year and a half to sell. And I didn't really have anything to recommend me to real estate. And I failed miserably for five torture-filled years until I went to a sales seminar that taught me everything I needed to know about sales, didn't really learn any, anything about real estate. There was a lady in my office who went with me and she had no closings, no hope of succeeding in real estate. She didn't take her five years to fail. She was an overnight failure, I guess you would say. But she had about six months in the business, no, no production whatsoever. And then 90 days later, she had 19 listings. And in the same 90-day period, I generated listings, sales, listings of mine that sold, and closings totaling 50. So how did that happen? Well. It happened again because we didn't learn anything about real estate, but we learned a whole lot about sales. So that's what we're going to teach you today. So one of the um, uh, observations that I guess I have made over my many years of, you know, 30 years in the real estate industry is that, you know, w no matter which way the market is going, there's a tiny group of agents that seem to get better and better and better. Why is that? It's because they're market proof. The question is, what do they do every day that causes that to happen? Not what do they know, because we all know it, but what do they do every, do every day to make that happen? And it's really five things. The other thing that I've noticed is everybody gets into this business thinking, oh, I'm gonna do great, I'm gonna get me a little name badge and I'm gonna get me some business cards and I'm gonna get me a real estate license and I'm gonna make a lot of money. But in a relatively short period of time, reality set in for me and for the vast majority of people. You know, it's funny, in America today, out of every 100 agents that get their license, probably 85 of them are gonna fail and not even renew their license in two years. Of the remaining 15, most of them are either gonna be in a constant state of failure or they're gonna be you know, earning a poverty level or income or they're gonna be earning way below their potential, like I was. So you get about 5% of the people that get into real estate and they have great success. They're earning an above average income. They're successful by anybody's standards. And of course, half of them did it by marrying the broker, right? Or their brother-in-law is a builder, or they have some secret that I didn't have. Not that I'm bitter, maybe a little, but that was not my story. So the question is, what is it that the failing groups all have in common. And it really is a couple of things. One is they chose to adapt the tr or adopt the training that the real estate industry gives them, just like I did. And the second thing is, I don't think it was a good fit. The training in the real estate industry and those particular agents probably shouldn't have worked out that way. So, what I want to do today is give you the secrets to making more money in real estate right away that you can learn very easily and we'll start making more money together. So why is it that our industry doesn't help? You know, every, every month I get an issue of Realtor Magazine, you do too. And I read every issue of Realtor Magazine and I look, I count up the number of full page articles or full page ads on two topics. One is technology and the other is sales skills. There's probably 10 or 11 on technology. How many are there on sales skills? I've never seen a single one. So in my state, it says salesperson right on your license. It says for sale right on the sign. It is the sales business, but our own industry is sending us a computer magazine basically. So that's not helpful. Here's the good news though. This is a very simple business when you really think about it. There are, we don't find ourselves in an unlimited set of scenarios. It's a very limited set. For example, you're going to find yourself 
sitting with some people in their house that are thinking about selling their house doing a listing presentation. Everything I teach is in a presentation-based approach because you can learn a presentation, deliver that, and it's, it's just easier that way. So listing presentation. Then you're going to find yourself talking to those same people about pricing their house correctly, doing a pricing presentation. Now this probably never happens in your town, but in my town there's actually agents that already have an overpriced listing. I know, it's a shock. They have to go back and get a price reduction. So that's a presentation. Then you're gonna find yourself sitting with some people in your office that are thinking about buying a house, doing a buyer presentation, hopefully that would lead to them using your lender, them signing a buyer broker agreement before you ever get in the car or search the MLS. Then you're gonna be showing the houses. And there's a right way and a wrong way to do that. There's four words that every fearless agent knows to say inside every house to get people to buy houses. Then they're, they fall in love. Then you're gonna race back to the office or wherever you go to write it up. And getting the buyer to write an acceptable offer uh, so that they don't lose out on their perfect house, that's a presentation. Then you're gonna present the offer to either your seller, somebody else's seller, another agent or somebody, that's a presentation. And then finally, we've got those unique scenarios like the uh, for sale by owner, the boogeyman of real estate, right? Or the uh, expired, already they've had a horrible experience with some other agent, now they can't wait to meet you. And then we've got investors. But really that's about it. So that was maybe 10 or 11 scenarios. So what if you had a set of words to get those people to sign pieces of paper with you and a set of words to get those people to uh, meet with you in the first place on the phone, then you couldn't help but be earning an above average income in real estate and be one of those very successful agents. I would venture to say if you had just one of those, a killer, memorized, blow away your competition every single time listing presentation that you absolutely love, you cannot wait to show to people, then you very quickly would be earning an above average income and you'd be successful. But if I had a hundred random agents in a room, how many of them would even have that one? And the answer is probably none. Why is that? It was because the industry always has us worrying about you know, the market or how to fiddle around on Facebook all day or making a flyer, all kinds of agency, how not to go to jail with your broker. All that's important, but none of it's important if you cannot sell. So that's what we teach is how to sell, how to make money in real estate. That's our 100% focus. I want to tell you a story about one of my coaching students. He's unique in the fact that um, he started coaching with me the very day he got his license. And I had met with him prior to him getting his license. His name is James. And uh, he wasn't sure he had what it takes to succeed in real estate. And I said, James, you're a nice guy. He had a job where he was um, uh, doing uh, recruiting for a college. So he was already on the phone. And I said, you're a nice guy in person. You're a nice guy on the phone. And he seemed very laid back, not very energetic, almost came off as a little bit lazy. He's not, but he wasn't peppy or energetic. And I said, if you're willing to learn five presentations, you're willing to be very pure to the fearless agent dialogues on the phone, you're willing to show up for work every day like you're already doing, I guarantee your success. So he decides, okay, he's gonna get into real estate. So he starts coaching with me on day one. We fast forward 12 months later, it's December. He calls me up and says, hey, I just wanted to thank you because I got the Rookie of the Year award in, in my company. And I said, well, how, how did we end up? He said, well, I had 24 closings. I have nine in escrow and I took 53 listings. I said, well, was there, there was about 120 agents in his company. I said, did any of the other 120 agents take 53 listings? He said, no. I said, well, you're not the rookie of the year. You're the agent of the year. And that's what Fearless Agent is all about. Hi, my name's James Michener with Bloom Tree Realty in Prescott, Arizona. I've been a part of the Fearless Agent movement for going on five years, and I truly could not be happier than I am right now that I took that leap um, four, four years ago and uh, made the big investment of uh, 
buying into the fearless agent system. Um, I couldn't be happier to recommend it to other agents that are looking for a coach that's going to be there for them when they have questions. It has a presentation that's been proven for not only your buyers, your sellers, but your investors as well. And has a good interactive social media group that will be more supportive than you'll find in any other place. Um, I really hope you join the Fearless Agent group and uh, look me up on Facebook and give me a call with any questions that you may have about it. Love to help with any questions. So how did he do it? Well, for one thing, he knew what we actually get paid for in real estate and most agents don't know that. So one thing that, that Fearless Agents do is these five things. Number one is they generate leads every day. You've got to be in the lead generation business. Forget real estate. Be generating a massive enough number of leads that you can scrape the easy people off the top and let everybody else fight for those problem people. You've met the problem people. Then you've got to go on three listing appointments a week. Now imagine that you go on three listing appointments a week. You could be pretty goofy and somebody is going to list with you just because they like you, right? And the great listing agents will admit, we're not getting those listings because of our super SAR sales skills. We're hitting it off with people. But you've got to go in order to hit it off with people. The third thing is that you've got to build a database and feed it. And one thing that I did wrong when I was new in real estate, and a lot of people do wrong, is they try to put too many people in their database and it becomes overwhelming. I don't think anybody should earn the right to get into your database unless they've said, I am going to be selling my house, let's say in the next 18 months, but they're a real seller. Or they just happen to be hooked up some way that they could refer you tons of business. Then you're working with a smaller group of people going deeper with those people and it's not so overwhelming. The next thing is to be in control of every appointment. You know, somebody's going to be in control and many times you're in their house so it's a little bit difficult. And then finally, you want to have control over your time so that you have balance in your life. And I always say that real estate can be a great living but is not necessarily a great life. You know, my partner and I ended up being the top producing team for Century 21 in the state of Arizona and I never worked a Saturday or a Sunday. So that's a message of hope. But I'll, I'll tell you, most of the agents that are producing agents that I talk to haven't had a single day off without a phone call, without a text, without an email in probably years. But I want you to know that you can have a life and still earn an above average income in real estate. Now what is it that every fearless agent knows that the other agents don't know? I call it the 2, 2, 5, and 2. So please write that down if you would. There's only two jobs that we ever get paid for in real estate. One is scheduling an appointment and the other is getting a signature. And everything else we do is charity work. Might be necessary, meeting with the appraiser or doing all that stuff, but you're not getting paid for it. So if the only two jobs that you ever get paid for is scheduling an appointment and getting a signature, then we're going to quit doing what most of the other failing agents are doing, like making a flyer, talking about the market, fiddling around on Facebook all day. There's only two forms of communication that are going to cause those two jobs to happen. Communicating is not texting, it's not emailing, it's not Facebooking, it's not LinkedIning. It's going to be a telephone conversation that books an appointment. It's going to be a face-to-face -face interaction that gets a signature. So there's five key presentations that every fearless agent knows. So number one, it's a listing presentation. You should have that, not memorized word for word, but step by step, not skipping steps. The listing presentation and the pricing presentation are designed not for you, not for me, but for your customer. They're designed to show a seller a way to get their house sold for more than it's actually worth. Show the seller how they could end up with way, way more money, bottom line, than they could get any other way. Of course, that helps you, but it's really designed for them. Always make it about them. There's a for sale by owner presentation that shows a for sale by owner how they're going to end up with way, way more money if they use a real estate professional. Not necessarily you, but a real estate professional. Then there's a buyer presentation that's really designed to show every buyer a step-by-step -step process that if they follow it, 
they're going to end up getting the best house of all the houses that are available to them with the amount of money they got. And then there's finally an investor presentation that shows the investor how by not making the mistakes that almost all other investors are making, doing things different, much safer, much higher rate of return. Now again, all of these help you, but they're really designed for your customers. Secret number two is how to get business, okay? Now, I fly all the time. I fly Southwest Airlines because they do jokes on the plane. They've allowed me to do jokes on the plane. I don't think they're ever going to do that again. But anyway, I love Southwest Airlines. And in their in-flight magazine, I was reading, uh, they have these little articles, the top 10 this, top five that. It was the top five least respected professions. Who do you think made the list? Oh, we made it. Oh, we were the, really the top five <laughs> least respected professions, realtors. Well, who else was on the list? Well, of course, you had the used car salesman. Uh, of course, you had the attorneys. Uh, then they always, if they hang around long enough, turn into politicians, right? Who was number one? We did it. Oh, we were the number one least respected profession, really? Well, I don't know how accurate the research is at Spirit Magazine, but I think it's fair to say that every consumer has a friend, a relative, an acquaintance, or they themselves were a miserable failure in real estate. So there's a lot of that out there. Obviously, the for sale by owner does not think we're worth what we charge. Obviously, the expired or canceled listing, they, they have been embittered against us. So there's a little bit of that out there. So if that's true, either in perception or reality, we have to have what they call a value proposition that's going to fix that. So what is a value proposition? Well, I guess that's fancy corporation talk for what do you say when they say, why should I even meet with you? Well, every fearless agent has the exact same answer to that. It's because I do business completely differently than all other agents. And it virtually guarantees you of two things. One is that your house will sell, and the other is that you would end up with way, way more money bottom line than you could get any other way. Would you say that's definitely what you're looking for? And magically, everybody says yes to that, right? So one of the rules of sales, what I call the science of sales, is you never ask a question that could possibly have the wrong answer. And then we're going to take that value proposition and we're going to apply it to the different types of customers that we have. So you might just write these down. We've got buyers, we've got sellers, we've got uh, cold call you know, sellers, we've got for sale by owners, we've got expireds, we've got people that we're trying to generate referrals from that are friends, family, relatives, sphere of influence, that type of thing, um, investors. So we're just going to slightly modify that value proposition so we don't have to learn a ton of stuff, just, just one basic format, I guess. Well, let's talk about for sale by owners, for example. Now, when I was brand new in real estate, I was taking all these classes, and whoever was teaching the class would say, here's what you say to for sale by owners, and I'm writing it down. And uh, then at the break, I would go up and I'd say to the instructor, hey, um, when you said that to the for sale by owners, did they ever say, because I was trying to think of what the for sale by owner might say, every time the instructor said, you know, I pretty much worked my sphere of influence or I pretty much worked referrals, I realized that the people that were teaching me, they had never done it. And they probably learned it from some other person who had never done it. So I just want you to know what I'm about to tell you works every single time and I did it and all of my coaching students do it, okay? So part of the thing with for sale by owners, let's say you were just walking down the street and you were gonna knock on doors randomly. How many doors do you think you would have to knock on to find one person thinking about selling their house right now? What number is that? You're right. How many for sale by owner doors do you have to knock on to find one person thinking about selling their house right now? Right, one out of one, it doesn't get any better than that. I know one of the top 10 agents in every major market in America, they start their day calling for sale by owners, not because they're so bulletproof, they don't have to worry about the big, bad, scary FISBO. It's, it's, you know, it's the low hanging fruit, they get that. So what is it that makes a for sale by owner different than a normal seller? Is it that they don't wanna pay a commission? 
No, no seller wants to pay a commission. I've never had a seller say, hey, Bob, I don't really care if my house sells, but I definitely want to pay you a commission, right? That's not it. It's they kind of think they got it all figured out and then that kind of thing. So we're going to put a little doubt in their mind, maybe, which they already have. So when you call the for sale by owner, the big difference between a for sale by owner and a real estate agent is the for sale by owner has their scripts memorized. The agents many times are winging it, okay? So when we call a for sale by owner and you're a fearless agent, we're gonna say, hi, my name is Bob Leffler. You're gonna use your own name, by the way. Hi, my name is Bob Leffler. I'm a real estate agent with a company called XYZ Realty. And I was just calling because my records indicate that your house is for sale by owner. Is that true? Now, my records indicate what that does is it kind of knocks them off their game. So the reality is with a for sale by owner or an expired, they're either going to blow you off in two seconds or you're going to have a nice, comfortable conversation. So you've got to trick them into having that nice, comfortable conversation. We have to have a set of words that causes that. So my records indicate kind of gets them off their game. And then I said, my records indicate that your house is for sale by owner. Is that true? And that takes away the thing that they always love to say to us, which is, oh, we're selling it ourselves. Now they can't say that because I already said it. Sometimes they'll still say it. They'll say, oh, we're selling it ourselves. I go, stop my ribs, you're killing me. I just said that, right? Okay, so they say yes. And then you launch into just a couple of questions about their favorite topic, their house. Now you can hurt yourself by asking too many questions. So don't ask about the price. Don't ask them where they're moving to. Ask them a couple of questions about, does your house have a, would you describe it as a big backyard or a smaller backyard? Uh, does your house have both a living room and a family room or a great room or how does that work? And get them thinking and, and that causes that nice comfortable conversation to happen. Then. Again, don't hurt yourself by asking too many questions, just two. And then say, we're gonna hit them with the setup question. Now this is the secret to the science of sales. You have this elaborate setup that leads to one magic question that has no wrong answer, and you already know the answer. And you apply that to every part of your sales career, and then this gets a lot easier. So the setup question with a for sale by owner is, hey, let me ask you something. You're trying to sell your house by not having it on the market with a real estate professional. Is that because you hate realtors? Now for the first time, they've probably heard that their house is not on the market. We realtors are very bad about this. We've got to get our story straight. Many times realtors will say, how long have you been selling your house? Isn't the better question, how long has your house been sitting there not selling? Or they'll say, Mr. Fisbo, how long have you had your house on the market? Well, their house isn't on the market. What is the market? It starts with M, L, you know the market. So we gotta get our story straight. So, so hey, let me ask you something. You're trying to sell your house by not having it on the market. Pause just a second with a real estate professional. Is that because you hate realtors? And they're gonna say, no, I don't hate realtors. And, I, and then you're gonna have to act like you literally could not believe that was their answer. You gotta go, really? So uh, it's, it's not because you hate real estate? What is it about? And they're gonna say, well, we don't wanna pay a commission. And you have to go, really? So it's about money? And they're gonna go, yeah, it's about money. And then you say, let me ask you this. And then you hit them with the magic question that works every single time. Let me ask you this, if you knew absolutely for certain that by doing business with me, the two things would happen. One is your house would actually sell. The other is that you'd end up with way, way more money bottom line than you could get any other way, with or without an agent, and I know that's a, a big promise, but if you knew that, would you at least want to hear about it? I mean, be honest. Now, that question works every single time. Is it gonna get me the appointment every single time? No. Is it gonna get me the listing every single time? No. But what it will do is you will know that if that question did not get you the appointment, there was no question that would get you the appointment. I just want you to make sure you're not leaving any money behind that you deserve to be earning because you, if you'd had the right words, okay? So 
then they say yes and you say let's do this let's find a time when um, we can get together i like to meet with people in the afternoons or the evenings are you nine to five people and we book the appointment okay you know i have a coaching student his name is philip he's in colorado and he like james uh called me up and and uh, started coaching with me on his very first day in real estate. Well, 10 weeks into his uh, real estate career, he called me back and he said, hey, I just wanna say thank you because I got my first closing check. And I said, hey, that's great. Let me ask you about your numbers if I can. So, uh, and I want you to write these down. I said, how many listing appointments did you schedule in your very first 10 weeks in, in real estate? He said, 26, please write that down. Um, I said, how many of those canceled and you didn't get to go? He said, 10. How many of those did you go on? He said, I went on 16. I said, how many listings did you take? He said, seven. And then uh, two of those I think had uh, gone under contract and one of them had closed and that's why he called me. But so that ratio is for every five that he scheduled, two of them canceled, he went on three and he got one. And that's a very normal ratio. Now, keep in mind, he didn't even know how to use the MLS or uh, uh, you know, write a contract, really. And those aren't amazing stats for a fearless agent, but I think they are amazing stats for an agent in their first 10 weeks. I can tell you my first 10 weeks in real estate were nothing like that, okay? So what was it that he had that made that happen? I want you to write these two words down. Unfair advantage. That's what I, I want you to have. I don't want it to be a fair competition. I want you to have a grossly unfair advantage over your competition. He understood the science of sales, and that's what I want you to understand. I want you to understand that there's this elaborate setup that leads to one magic question that has no wrong answer, and you already know the answer. Most coaching programs are focused on two things primarily. One is they're always talking about your big why. You know. Your big why ain't the problem we've been having with you. It's your big how, isn't it? I don't care why you wanna make a lot of money. It's America, we like money. It's more fun to be rich than poor. It doesn't matter to me. So your big how is, this, is what we always talk about. And then the other one is accountability. Constantly having you report your numbers on a coaching call is not gonna give you a skill accountability is never your problem it's your schedule we got to fix that okay every day has to look identical then it's a business okay so we focus on three things if we're not going to be always talking about your big why and we're not going to be talking about accountability and always having you report your numbers which may give you an awareness that hey I stink at this but that's about it what are we going to do we're going to talk about three things we're going to talk about the skills that you don't have, that if you did, you'd be making way more dollars per hour. We're gonna talk about the schedule you're not sticking to, that if you were, you'd be making way more dollars per hour and you'd get to have a life. We're gonna talk about the systems that we put in place that get you to earn way more dollars per hour and make the job more fun and you don't have to reinvent the wheel every deal you have. So we put all those things together and that's gonna make you more profitable as a real estate agent. So step one, step two, step three, how do I build my business? That's what we're gonna always be talking about. Let's talk about your schedule. You know, I used to work in a barbecue restaurant. I used to be the manager. And every day we would open at the same time of day. We would close at the same time of day. We'd open at 10, we'd close at nine. The lunch rush would come at noon, the dinner rush would come at five. We uh, would cook in the morning and we would clean in the evening. And it never changed. So there was no day when I walked into the restaurant and said, hey gang, we're gonna do it today like realtors do it. We're gonna open it like, oh, I don't know, two in the afternoon and maybe we'll clean in the morning and cook in the evening. That would be ridiculous. Why is it that realtors do it that way? Every day has to be identical. So your skills, your schedule, and the system. So how does our, how does our coaching work? It has three parts. First is we ship out to you five presentations. It's a listing presentation, pricing presentation, for sale by owner presentation, buyer and investor. That coaches you up to a very high level where no one will ever be able to compete with you in your marketplace 
in a face-to-face -face presentation. You'll be able to do a magic trick that no one else is able to do. You're gonna be able to walk up the door to the listing knowing that if it's gettable, you're the one that can get it. You know you're gonna get it at full commission. You'll never have to discount your commission when you're a fearless agent. You're gonna be able to get it listed for one year. You're gonna be able to get pre-signed every two week price reductions of $5,000 or $25,000 depending on your price range. And that is a magic trick that only works one way. Then I'm gonna send you all of the uh, phone dialogues for live calls, messages left, and some other things I want you to have just to get you earning more money right away. Then you get to call me anytime you want to. We don't have regularly scheduled coaching calls because I think that's a broken model. I want you to get the coaching when you need it as much as you want. And of course, you're gonna need more of it in the beginning maybe than later on. But I want to, you can feel free to call me anytime. What do people call me about? Almost always it's two things. One would be like a strategy reason, like they say, uh, what do I need to get great at next? Or I'm thinking about hiring an assistant or um, uh, I've got this deal going on, how should I handle it? And the other reason is, hey, they said this on the phone and I didn't know what to say. In every one of those situations, we're not looking for creativity from you. We give you the exact right best words to say. Every fearless agent has the exact right same best answer. And then you're more quickly getting on to higher level things. The third part of our coaching is group coaching. And it really serves a different purpose. The one-on-one -on -one is all about you, like this is. And the group coaching is really actually training. So we have over 50 different skill sets that we teach you in easy to learn modules. It's very advanced, a PhD level, step by step on what we call the science of sales, how you apply that to every part of your real estate career, and then everything gets easier. For example, we cover in great depth all five of those presentations, all the phone dialogues. I don't want you to know just what to say, I want you to know why you're saying it that way. We cover all the, the strategies and the skills for prospecting and, and presenting and farming and database and follow-up, something we call the referral factory, objection handling. It's everything you need on making money in real estate, okay? So that group call is currently every Wednesday morning for one solid hour of me training and then about 15 to 30 minutes at the end for questions and then each episode is recorded for you so you don't feel like you have to be on the call live so the people in Australia it's 3 a.m. they're never on the call live that I know of I would know they talk funny but you don't have to feel like you need to be on the call live and that way you're getting the maximum amount of coaching at the lowest possible price so if any of that sounds like it makes sense to you, if it seems like it might be a good fit, if you want the five presentations, if you want all the phone dialogues, you want the one-on-one -on -one coaching, you want the group coaching, here's what I recommend you do. Go to fearlessagent.com, click on the big banner, and then it'll walk you through the process. And then if you ever have a, if you have a question before you sign up, you can always feel free to call me and uh, the number that's gonna be somewhere and then uh, we'll have a conversation before you become a fearless agent. You know, when it comes to telephone prospecting, there's FISBOs, there's expireds, cold calls. I want you to be a rock star at all of that stuff. But I wanna talk about expired listings, which I think, honestly, a little harder than for sale by owners maybe. They're getting way more calls. We have good results as fearless agents because what we're saying is not what everybody else is saying. And the funny thing about expireds is when I was new and taking classes in real estate, they'd say, uh, the secret to work on expireds is you have to get them to admit that they still wanna sell. Well, that sounds easy, and yet it was almost impossible. I'd call them up, I'd say, hey, do you, do you still wanna sell? They go, well, we don't wanna list it. I'd say, yeah, but do you still wanna sell? They go, well, we don't wanna list it with a realtor. I'd say, if I had a buyer, would you sell? They go, Bob, do you have a buyer? I go, I don't know, I haven't seen your house yet, but if I had a buyer, would you sell? They go, we don't wanna list it with a real time. I go, okay, I hate my life, this is torture, right? So any of my friends that know me know that I'm the guy who will lie awake nights thinking up the perfect words to trick people into being honest with me when they otherwise would not. And I don't know why you have to do that, but you do. 
So what I came up with is you call the expired and you say, hi, my name is Bob Leffler. I'm a real estate agent with a company called XYZ Realty. And I'm calling because my records indicate that your house was uh, for sale and left the market unsold. Is that true? Now that is a complicated enough question where they have to go, uh, yeah, okay. So, well, the reason I'm calling you is because I specialize in helping people who have had their house for sale but were unsuccessful because their agent didn't do their job. Do you think that was the case for you? Now, they're expired or canceled. What do you think 80% of them do? Do you think 80% of them blame their agent? Oddly, no. Probably about 10 to 15% of the time they blame their agent. But the 10 of the, so the 80% the of the time they go, oh no, no, it wasn't, it wasn't my agent's fault, it was something else. Well, what do I know for certain when they don't blame their agent? They're not serious about selling their house, but that 20% of the time when they say, yeah, it was our agent's fault, what do I know for certain? They're serious about selling their house. They wouldn't be blaming their agent, dishing on their agent, if they weren't serious about selling their house, and I could have never found that out any other way. Then I hit them with the value proposition. I say, you know, I want you to know I do business completely differently than all other agents, and it virtually guarantees you of two things. One is that your house will actually sell, and number two is you will end up with way, way more money bottom line than you could get any other way. Would you say that's definitely what you're looking for this time? And they always say yes to that, okay? Now, the funny thing, I've called a googillion um, expireds in my career. Never even one time did they blame their agent and I was not able to get the appointment scheduled. That, that doesn't mean I got the listing. Maybe they canceled the appointment before I got to go. But that was the secret sauce to getting, getting them to blame their agent gets you the appointment scheduled. So I hope that helps you out with expires. Why don't we talk about um, cold calls a little bit. You know, before we do, I, uh, I was in my house one day and the phone rang and uh, I picked up the phone. I said, hello. And the guy says, hey, this is John from Ultra Clean Carpet Cleaning, and we're going to be cleaning your neighbor's carpets in a, in, a, in a week, and I wondered if your carpet needs cleaning. And I look down, and I go, oh my gosh, you better get over here right away. Yeah, put the lights and siren on. We got problems, okay? So he says, really? I go, yeah, I need carpet cleaning. I had let it go too long. So he says, okay, great. So we schedule a time, and he comes over. Now, he comes over to clean my carpets, and uh, now I'm a real estate agent, right? You're a real estate agent. We've had a lot more carpet cleaning experiences than civilians, okay? I've had my rentals cleaned, I've had my house, my customers' houses. I know what to expect when it comes to carpet cleaning, believe me. So he gets all done, and I'm telling you, the carpet was 10 times cleaner than any other carpet cleaning experience I had ever had. So I said, John, now look, you're, you're doing something different here. This is much, much better than other people do. What's the secret? And he says, starts going into some chemistry lesson. I'm going, okay, you're boring me. Here's the deal. I'm a real estate agent. Uh, I need carpet cleaning. I know people who do. Give me a bunch of your cards, okay? So here's the question, okay? I by, I, by the way, have referred hundreds of people. He could probably retire on me alone. He's still my carpet cleaner. Love this guy. John from Ultra Clean, if you're in Scottsdale, Arizona. Here's the question. If you lived in my town and you wanted your carpets cleaned, would you want me to give you his phone number? Of course you would. Right. That's not the question. The real question is do you want your past clients referring business to you the way I just sold you on John from UltraClean? That's the question. Getting referrals from people, it's not by saying, oh, by the way, and all that stuff, that's fine. It's not by having I heart referrals on my card. I guess that's fine. But you've got to have a set of words that causes people to want to give you referrals right then and there on the phone. So that's one of the things we teach you at Fearless Agent. Let's talk about cold calling. For some reason, when you get into the real estate business, they teach you all kinds of stuff that's crazy, insane, backwards, doesn't work. Do the opposite, that'll always work. That's kind of my, my motto. 
because for some reason, almost no one in the real estate industry knows the first thing about sales. Now in corporate America, a lot of great training in sales, real estate, non-existent. If you wanna learn the science of sales in real estate and you don't learn it from me or one other guy, you're not gonna learn it. So here's how it works in, in uh, cold calling. When you're cold calling, you're taught to say, uh, hey, I'm just, they call it circle prospecting or something crazy like that, but I think what they tell you to say is just sold, just listed calls. First of all, here's an ironclad rule of sales. Never talk commission until they're sold on the price. I learned this from Floyd Wickman, the greatest sales trainer in the history of the world, in my opinion. Never talk commission until they're sold on the price. You never talk price until they're sold on you and your company. You never talk about you and your company until they're sold on the idea of using an agent. In other words, if it's a for sale by owner, they're not even sold on using an agent. So you would have a for sale by owner presentation that sells them on that. Only then would you ever talk about you and your company when they're sold on you and your company and they're sold on the idea of listing with you tonight only then would you ever talk price. When they're sold on the price, only then would you ever mention commission. So if you just follow that format, everything gets a lot easier. But when you're cold calling, if you say, hey, I just sold the one down the street, and I was calling to see if you might be thinking of selling your house, then they're immediately gonna say, how much did you sell the one down the street for? Nothing good could come from that. You're gonna say, well, I uh, sold it for $385,000. They go, oh, yeah, they gave it away. Really? Nothing good could come from that. And you're talking price before they're sold on you and your company. And oh, by the way, these people have no intention of selling ever anyway. And now you've damaged your brand, okay? The other, the other one, by the way, if you called me up and said, are you thinking of selling your house? And I say, nope, I will die in this house. I'm never leaving. I love this house so much, best house in America. And then you say, you know, I just sold the one down the street. That, am I gonna all of a sudden say, oh, well in that case, I'm gonna sell my house? No, it's ridiculous. Don't say that, okay? The other thing they teach us to say is at the end of the call, do you know any friends or neighbors who might be thinking of selling their house? Hey, you're having enough problems getting your own friends and neighbors to refer you business. Do you think on a stranger cold call they're gonna refer you business? No, time is the only resource you got. You don't need, if you're gonna get a no, you want the world's quickest no and get on to that next cold call. So what do you say? When you call up, you say, hi, my name is Bob Leffler. I'm a real estate agent with a company called Fearless Agent, and I was just calling to see if you might be thinking of selling your house. They say no. I say, well, do you have any plans of moving ever? And every once in a while, somebody will say, oh yeah, but not for like, eight months and you go, holy cow, eight months, it's an emergency, right? We better get together right away. So you, you don't miss out on any that way. Now, it's thinking of selling, planning on moving. Not everybody who's selling is moving. Sometimes people have already moved and they're selling the one that they left behind. Not everybody who's moving is selling. Sometimes people will move out of their house and then rent it out to someone else. And that is the single most financially devastating mistake most people will ever make in real estate. You get to talk them out of doing something crazy like that. So getting the words right on a cold call are important. And then what happens if they say yes? The first question you ask. Now, if you were at a party and your friend who you've known for a long time says, hey, we're, we're gonna be moving. What's the first question you would ask? When? No. You wouldn't be saying, when can I make money off you <laughs> because I'm a realtor? You'd say, where are you moving to? And you gotta get that question answered. They go, well, I don't know. Well, if you did know, what would the answer be? Well, I don't really know. Are you moving out of the state? Are you moving out of the country? Are you in the witness protection program? You know, what's going on? So, are you need something bigger, something smaller? Don't ask why, ask where. So they, you get some sense of where, get that question answered, or if they're very evasive, skip it because it's unpleasant, it's something going on, it's a divorce, it's something bad, foreclosure, whatever. Then it's when. Here's the way to ask when. When is the soonest, I'm curious, that something like you and all of your stuff would actually be moving out of the house you're in into a different house? You know, what's the 
the soonest something realistically like that would ever actually happen? That's the question I want answered. If you say when, they'll say, oh, I don't know, eight months. And you go, really, you'd be moving in eight months? They go, oh, no, then we just start thinking about it in eight months. I want to know when moving date is. Then they're gonna, they're gonna, you, you're going to have a decision to make. You're either going to schedule an appointment right then, or you're going to say, hey, if you knew for certain that by waiting, I don't know, till spring or till whenever, eight months, that you'd be losing tens of thousands of dollars, would you absolutely have to wait? Well, how would I be losing tens of thousands of dollars by waiting? Well, let's say you would. Would you have to wait? No, I, I wouldn't have to wait. Well, let's do this. Let's find a time to get together and then try to schedule the appointment or end every call without an appointment with this phrase, when would you like me to check back with you? I want to know when, and then whatever they tell you, you're going to cut it in half. If they say, yeah, call me back in six months, you're going to call them back in three. You're going to send them a thank you note. You're going to send them your postcards and mark it the way you do. And then you're going to call and build relationships with these cold call people until they know you. And then you're going to start asking them for referrals. I hope that helps you. Okay, gang, I don't know how much of this made sense to you. If you think that there's any way that you would be a good fit for what we do, I'll tell you what's important to me, okay? Three things have to be in place before fearless agent coaching is going to be a good fit. Number one, you have to get my jokes. I don't know why that is. It's a sickness. That's just for me. Number two, you have to be saying, you know, it's a pretty good bet that I'm going to be better off financially with fearless agent coaching than without. And then the third thing is I have to know I can help you. Here's how I would know. If you're willing to learn five presentations at your own pace, not like it's an emergency, listing presentation, pricing presentation, FISBO, buyer, investor, and then just be competent at those. You don't have to be a rock star at that. What do you have to be a rock star at? The phone. But there's no reason being great on the phone if you're going to choke when you show up, right? But those are going to make you very confident and that's going to leak into that phone conversation. You're going to feel a lot better on the phone. A lot of call reluctance call comes from people saying, I hope they don't say yes because I don't know what I'm going to do when I go over, right? But I want you to be able to get every listing, full term, full commission, pre-signed price reductions, just like every other fearless agent does. Then on the phone, you got to be willing to get all that other crazy coaching out of your head. I don't want that stuff in your head. I want you to be very rigid or very pure on the fearless agent phone dialogues and then you got to be willing to show up every day. If you're willing to do those three things, it is a good fit. Then we can guarantee your success. So again, the coaching has three parts. It's the five presentations. It's the one-on-one -on -one calls with me. You get me, not someone else, me. And then you get the weekly group coaching also. So that's all combined. There is one affordable one-time membership fee. And then there's a monthly subscription fee. So that's a way of delivering everything to you that we want you to, it's kind of a real estate business in a box is basically what it is. It actually comes in a box, but we're going to ship that out to you. Comes UPS, probably takes seven days or less. We email you the other stuff and then you're on the call with me live and on the group call. Anything we can do to help you, you know, we want to do it. Nobody cares more about your success than we do. Feel free to call me anytime if you have a question because we want to make you a fearless agent. Thanks. Hi, I'm Colton Lindsay, and I'm a realtor just like you. When I first got into real estate, I signed up for fearless agent coaching and training. A few years later, I was making $400,000 a year working four and a half days a week. If you want results like this, go to fearlessagent.com and sign up today.